family, what's going on everybody? Welcome to a brand new episode of the Teacher Success Series of Caps and Gowns TV. That's right, we're providing inspiration and motivation in preparation for your next graduation. Yup, this is a brand new segment that we got going on here at Caps and Gowns TV, sponsored by the Unashamed Nation. Yeah, that's right. We got great things coming along the way. In fact, we also launched a brand new success series just for the students. And you can definitely check into those videos right here. So listen, just a quick overview before we get into today's episode. Every single week, I got y'all. Like, I'm coming with a bang. I'm coming with some fire so that you can make it through this year and you know what we're not doing this just so that we can crawl to the finish line I'm talking about we're going to be going full speed ahead this year is going to be the absolute best year possible and I can't wait to see all that is going to be for you tenacious teachers and you awesome administrators we are going to get through this thing together in fact you're doing an amazing job already so every single week I'm coming back with another episode so that you can make it through this school year the way that you're supposed to just like any other year in fact, it's going to be better. All right, so let's get into episode one, week number one. And we're going to be talking about that taboo topic, y'all. That's right. We're going to be talking about virtual classroom management. And for the next few weeks, we're going to be talking about this same topic because it's going to be something that's going to enhance your students' engagement and achievement throughout this entire school year. So, so I'm going to give you three keys, and we're going to unlock those doors so that we can get to our next level, so that our classroom can be a well-oiled machine. All right? So let's get into key number one. All right, y'all, something really simple, but I promise you, it's a can't live without, all right? What I need you to do first, I know that you guys have gotten into your first couple of weeks of the school year, but what you need to do, if you have not already done so, and continue to do throughout the entire academic year, is I need you to establish a relationship with your classroom. That's right. I'm talking about every single student. And when I mean establish a relationship, I mean establish a relevant relationship. And I know that's really, really ambiguous, but I promise you, I won't leave you hanging. My favorite book says, and all that I get and get understanding. So I promise not to leave you hanging ever in any one of my videos. And if you ever have a question, please, we can chop it up. I promise you, I'll respond to you. All right. So what I mean by developing a relationship, I'm going to give you some practical tools. What I want you to do is is start opening up your heart to your students. Let me explain something to you, right? I'm not telling you this from a theory standpoint. I'm telling you this from a practical standpoint. If you can look closely, right, you can see that I still very much so have a baby face. And when I graduated from college in 2015, 22 years old, right out the gate, I started teaching high school. Most of my students were nearly my age. I taught seniors. And some of them, you know, they were kind of like super, super seniors. So they were even closer to my age. So there was a power struggle. I was trying very hard to to keep my classroom managed so that I could teach and so that there would be no fires in the classroom. I mean, literal fires, but also I wanted it to be an enjoyable experience for their lives to come. Like I'm not just about the right now, as you can clearly see, I got a cap and a gown on because I want you to get ready for your next graduation in life. So I learned really quickly. It was going to be nearly impossible for me to teach them content without having developed a relationship with them. They needed to see my heart. Once I fully understood this concept I implemented this strategy every single day the first five to ten minutes my motivation period I would take time to discuss with my students and we would check in with each other like how are you doing today and then I would share with them a piece of my life so in the fall 2012 I joined one of the greatest organizations known to man called Omega Psi Phi Fraternity Incorporated and we learned a lot of poems so I would share with them some of the poems that I had committed to memory and I would explain the poem and I would show them why it was relevant to their their lives as well as why it was relevant to my life I will also tell them about my personal relationships not too much but just enough so that they can see I was a human being just like them so I need you to use your discretion and open up your heart to them because once they see it they're gonna jump in there and you're going to be able to communicate and teach them effectively so, so key number one is this you've got to work hard out the gate to develop a working relationship with them it's going to be relevant and it's going to allow you to get to them what they desperately need so that they can successfully complete your class. All right, let's get into key number two. 
Key number two is the adverse of key number one. In addition to showing them your heart, I want you to give them an opportunity for them to show you theirs, right? Now listen, it's like taking out your crush on that first day. You got to show them something first. You got to court them a little bit. I know you might not like the analogy, but I hope you understand what I'm telling you. You have to bring those flowers. You got to bring those chocolates. You got to do whatever it is you got to do to get their attention so they can see you're serious, right? So the adverse to showing them that you are serious about this work, the adverse to showing them that you are tried and true and that you have their best interests at heart so that they trust you is allowing them to express themselves. Now, listen, if you do number one right, you won't even have to strategically do this. It's going to flow. The students are going to come to you. They're going to be uh, uh, flocking to you because you'll be their safe haven and you'll be able to teach them whatever it is that you want to teach them. All right. So I need you to allow them opportunity to express the things that they are passionate about about their dreams, their goals, their aspirations, maybe some things that are personal to them. Of course, you got to keep it professional. But what I'm telling you is this, if you allow them or if you show interest in the things that they're interested in, this will also help you in your instructional time. I'm telling you because you'll learn that you guys have more things in common than you think, as well as you'll be able to pick out topics that you know without shadow of a doubt that they will be interested in. And I'm getting into my next couple of weeks of classroom management. So let me pause right there. Key number two is this. I need you to show interest in the things that they are interested in. This is not the time for you to tell them what they're interested in is right or wrong. You are simply a listening ear. You are simply letting them know that you care about the things that they care about. And that will subconsciously translate to them that they are valuable and that you have their best interest at heart. All right. I know we rolling today, baby. Let's go ahead and get into key number three. But wait, but wait, but wait, but wait. I have to ask for a favor. Before we get into key number three, we are a growing channel. I got to let you know that. And we desire to help as many teachers as possible. So we need your help please hit that subscribe button below and the bell notification so that you can be notified for next week's episode. Also, feel free to tune in to our student success series and our parent success series that's going to drop next week. So listen, I'm telling you, we've got content for your future. I'm telling you, it's going to help you move along the way. I can't imagine what my first year in education would have been like if I'd had a resource just like this, okay? So think about those teachers who you know need this help. And it's completely free. All right, y'all, hit that subscribe button. Let's get into key number three. All right, y'all, listen, listen, listen. This is actually one of my specialties. As a former educator, I loved to confront those special students. That's what I would call them. My special students, you know, the one who loves just a little bit more attention, the one who can be a little bit disruptive, and you know, uh, during this time, they're probably the one who continues to mute, unmute themselves. They're probably the one who, you know, wants to send that private message that may be inappropriate for the time. Yeah, I'm talking about that special student, right? When I had my special students in my class, classroom, what I'd always do, this is a principle that I will always implement is isolation. Okay. And when I say isolation, I do not mean uh, in a negative context. What I'm talking about isolation, I'm talking about simply separating the student from the environment that they're in. And again, we don't do the ambiguous thing. So I'll give you full understanding of what I mean. When I say isolate them, I want you to think about in this context, right? This is a phrase that I always say when I'm empowering and when I'm coaching and when I am consulting educators around the country. I tell them this, if you give your students a stage, they are going to perform and they're going to put on a good show. Okay. So one thing that I would do in the physical classroom is literally ask them to step outside of the classroom so that we can have a one-on-one -on -one conversation. Okay. Pride and ego often gets in the way when you're trying to establish some sort of discipline in your classroom setting. All right. And you don't want that to stand in your way for too long. So again, when you give them a stage, when you try to check them and they feel disrespected, when you try to correct them in front of everybody without having had a relationship established that is not going to typically go over well for you. So you need to isolate them first so you can speak to the ears of their heart. Once you speak to their heart, they'll understand that you care. And once they understand that you'll care, it'll be a working relationship where you'll understand each other and you'll be able to accomplish what's necessary and they will get what they need to complete your class successfully and be an upstanding citizen that you desire for them to be, right? So listen, isolate them. Do not try to check them in front of everybody. No, I know you're thinking to yourself, right? 
right? Well, it's virtual. We can't really step outside of the classroom, but you can, okay? There are a couple of different solutions. You can have them maybe arrive a little bit before the class period starts. And I know you probably think, well, they don't even come to class on time. How could I have them arrive before? Okay, the adverse of that, you just have them stay a couple minutes after, all right? You shoot them a private message on whatever platform you guys are streaming. You send them an email. You, you got to work hard at this thing. It's not an easy thing, right? Like, it's no cookie cutter way. You've got to pursue it like your life depends on it because it truly does. Your classroom's life depends on it. And, and the livelihood of your classroom management is going to live or die because of this. I promise you, you need to implement this isolation key so that you can speak to the ears of that student's heart. You know, right? That special student's heart. And once they see you care, you're going to be able to tell them literally whatever you want. All right, so typically in a normal episode, we'd be wrapping it up right now. But of course, we love to add value to our tenacious teachers and our awesome educators. So we have a bonus tip for you today. That's right. We've got four keys so that you can implement in your classroom management this school year. And it works perfectly for a virtual setting. In fact, it's even better than a physical classroom setting. This is what I want you to do. Here's another tip you can use. It's going to sound super bold and many of you may not be comfortable with doing it, but I promise you it's going to work like a charm. I want you to invite your parents to your virtual classroom. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I need you to invite your parents to your virtual classroom. I'm talking about, yup, you middle school teachers. Yup, you high school teachers. Invite those parents. Of course, you know, they have the autonomy to choose whether or not they'll come. But I'm telling you, invite those parents to the classroom. It's, it's gonna, going to do a couple of things. Number one is going to dissolve this myth that teachers are not committed to their classroom. It's going to show them that you are truly committed as an educator, that you are truly committed as a tenacious teacher to your students' engagement and achievement, even through the pandemic called COVID-19. Now listen, listen, I understand that this may be an arguable statement. However, I still think that it holds some truth. Most of the times, the students in your classroom won't show off if they know another adult is there. I mean, another adult that's a parent, let alone show off in front of their own parent, right? And what that's going to subconsciously do is show the student that you and them are on the same side, that you and the parent are on the same team, and it's gonna be hard to work against you, so they might as well join you. Okay. Invite those parents to your classroom. Let them know that you have their students' best interests at heart. Let them know that you are trustworthy. Let them know that you are working with them and not against them. Come on, y'all, I'm telling you, it's going to work out for your good, all right? Listen, we gave you four keys today, and I hope you are as excited as we are for next week's episode. We're going on with another week of classroom management and again I'm so excited and elated for what's going to happen this school year it's going to be amazing but listen I need you to do me a favor before I go call all of your friends family and fellow teachers and let them know that this is the caps and gowns tv show the teacher success series where we're providing inspiration and motivation and preparation for your next graduation let's get it baby next week coming with another episode of classroom management I'll see y'all then